How will COVID-19 impact the way commercial real estate is financed? Join us as we bring active lenders together to discuss their debt and equity programs. Register for this must-attend event. episode of the CRE Advantage. Uh, today we are very privileged uh, to have with us a special guest or two special guests uh, from CoStar. Uh, that may or may not be a name that you're familiar with, but we're certainly excited about learning uh, the role that they play in the commercial real estate, real estate space, uh, how they help owners and investors in commercial real estate. Uh, they've been a, a partner with us for a number of years. So we're actually a client of CoStar, and, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about what that means, uh, the services they provide to us and companies like ours. Uh, but today we have with us um, Mr. Paul E. Hendershot, who is the market economist for CoStar. Uh, he covers the Dallas-Fort Worth market. And then we have uh, Dylan Grayson, uh, who's regional director at CoStar Group, um, one of the top uh, sales uh, persons, I guess, uh, there at CoStar. So gentlemen, welcome uh, to the CRE Advantage. Thanks for taking the time to join us. Thank you. Yeah. So um, the, what, what we want to do today is to learn a little bit about uh, you guys and, and about your company, uh, CoStar, the co company you represent. So um, if you don't mind, uh, Dylan, if you want to start, just kind of give us a little bit of your background, your history in commercial real estate. Um, a little bit of your bio, and then uh, Paul, we can we can do the same with you. Okay, yeah. So um, I came to CoStar a little over four years ago. I had a, a little bit of a background in real estate, uh, background in finance, and came to CoStar as a sales rep. I uh, was a sales rep uh, for the last four years. Uh, you know, rookie of the year, multiple presidents, club winners, and uh, luckily, and uh, then had the privilege to be uh, promoted to regional director, regional sales director for the DFW market. Okay, wow, very good. Um, and what about you, Dylan? Uh, what's what's your background in commercial real estate and your history with CoStar? Yeah, I've uh, been with CoStar for about a year, uh, about a year and a half now. Uh, and as the director of an analytics, uh, what we really do is tell the story of with the data. Uh, if you really uh, think of, you know, CoStar, and we'll get to this in greater detail, does a great job of collecting tons of information, but to take that information and synthesize it into digestible reports, analyzing trends, and there's someone like me in every market. So let's say you are looking at a piece of property in Boston or San Diego, you can call the, the, the analyst or uh, market economist who's covering that individual space, and they can give you a unique boots on the ground perspective. Um, just a little bit about my uh, background. Um, <clears throat> before joining CoStar, I was with a, a little boutique shop called Jones Lang LaSalle as their director of, uh, director of research covering the Carolinas. Mm -hmm. uh, and before that, I really had my career started in economic development. And I love that competitive aspect of you know, cities and regions fighting over or, you know, vying for, for um, companies and relocations and expansions. Um, I also served as an adjunct professor at the University of North Texas teaching applied economics. And uh, I've had research highlighted on numerous publications, including the Wall Street Journal, San Diego Union Tribune, and even BizNow. Uh, in addition to my experience in commercial real estate and economic development, I also served in the Air Force for five years as a communication specialist uh, and, and served in a, a volunteered to serve in Bosnia uh, as part of the implementation force in, uh, in back in the two back in 1995. So that's a little bit about my background. Wow, yeah, pretty impressive history. Well, thanks for uh, giving us uh, some information. It's a uh, very interesting couple things I didn't know. Um, I didn't know you worked for the little boutique. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so uh, guys, now most of our audience are people that uh, are not really familiar with commercial real estate. And CoStar plays a very significant role in the commercial real estate space. Um, now you have CoStar, the company, and, and we can talk about exactly what you guys do, what your business model is, but you also have 
other companies, I don't know if they're separate companies or, or different services that you offer to a different subset of clients in the commercial real estate space. So tell us a little bit about that. So CoStar has been around for about 35 years and uh, we, uh, our main focus, the CoStar database is, uh, it's an integrated platform for uh, global commercial real estate data from you know, having all the listings to risk modeling, underwriting process, credit risk management, uh, new construction, proposed construction, uh, detailed analytics, we track census level data, uh, census level real time data, and we have a collection of sites that really feed that database. Uh, we own uh, apart, apartments.com, apartment finder, uh, for rent.com, uh, a network of uh, internet listing services uh, for multifamily, as well as LoopNet, uh, City Feed Showcase, which are uh, some of the basically the largest uh, commercial real estate marketplace, uh, arguably in the world. Uh, and then we have uh, a series of land uh, internet listing sites as well. So um, uh, uh, quite a few, quite a few uh, sources uh, where our data comes from. We, we also acquired Smith Travel Research, uh, which is a very robust uh, industry uh, industry standard for the hospitality uh, space. Uh, we've recently acquired them. So there's a significant number of acquisitions that have come together to form this massive source of data, uh, this massive platform to market your properties uh, and to find the right apartment or the right asset for you. So, um, you know, specifically to the lending space, we've got about 7,000 lenders uh, or probably more than that now that uh, our clients from, you know, the biggest banks in the world to the specialty credit mezzanine finance, uh, you know, CMBS lenders, uh, all the way down to the one, two man shops, as well as uh, every large uh, brokerage shop in the country. Uh, every large owner in the country, all the way down to the guy who uh, decided he wanted to go into commercial real estate working from home uh, and everywhere in between. So uh, we cover a broad range of types of clients as well as we're, we're in a uh, large vendor space with roofers, remodelers, uh, appraisers, uh, anyone who needs data related to commercial real estate uh, is a fit for this platform and we're the, we're the only company that has over five million properties in our existing database and we are we have a team of researchers making phone calls scouring public records make making over five million uh changes to the data every day in addition to all the feeds that dylan uh spoke with as well spoke spoke to as well and also, just uh, we have a, a CoStar aircraft, a Cessna Grand Caravan, that's loaded with top of the line technology, literally flying over spaces to see the state of new construction, along with vehicles that are driving kind of similar to like a Google type vehicles mm -hmm. uh, and taking pictures as well. So we're really capturing this from all, all angles. Okay. Well, so let me ask you guys some questions to just really help our audience. Because you and I, the, the three of us, we're in the commercial real estate space. And mm -hmm. we can have a conversation. Um, we can be in front of a group of a thousand people and only the three of us know what we're talking about, right? Uh, so <laughs> I'm gonna break this down in practical terms so that um, uh, perhaps others understand the true value of uh, what you guys bring to the table. Uh, so let's suppose that um, I am a uh, developer and I want to uh, develop uh, a student housing project, uh, but I need data. I need, I need to know an area where there's a demand for student housing, um, where um, perhaps the, the cost uh, per, of construction is reasonable, the cost of land is reasonable. This is data that I need in order to formulate a plan uh, to develop this project, okay? Tell me how 
your company with, with all the offerings that you provide, how do you help a developer like me um, drive a decision using your data? So it's, uh, it really starts at the macro level and then drilling down. So uh, let's just say that you've identified uh, that uh, there, so you're, you're looking at, uh, call it 400 markets across the U.S. And, mm -hmm. and all of the universities that uh, reside in those markets. So we would start there at that, that macro level and say, all right, let's, let's take a look at the student housing situation for all these universities. Then we would filter that data down to you know, maybe some, some areas that would stand out to a developer saying, you know what, I think these uh, markets would be ideal based on this macro, this high level data. Uh, so then we've, we've narrowed our process down to where we want to go. So then we would drive in, we would go into the market and we would identify all of the available student housing current. We would identify all of the, uh, the rents, uh, you know, and the, the rent that we track is daily. So you're looking at real living, breathing, real time modeling that's happening constantly. So then you start looking at, okay, where is a good place for student housing in this area? I know that there's a need here. Now I need to figure out uh, wh where should I build? So then CoStar has all of the land data and we have all of the public record parcel data. So now a developer can dive into, all right, where, uh, you know, what, what piece of land makes sense? Is there no, is there no land available? but maybe there's an old building that I can demolish and, and replace with student housing. So now the developer has identified uh, some site selection uh, pieces that make sense. So from there, the developer uses our sales comp data. So we have, uh, we track every transaction in commercial real estate. So a developer can go back 20 years and look at all of the data uh, related to sales, related to all of the different metrics that make sense for that developer and really identify how much can I buy this land for. And by the way, we have all of the contacts for the owners, the brokers, and everyone that that developer would need to get in touch with. So you're talking about a, a, a full solution from where do I want to, where do I want to go and down to who do I need to talk to and how much should I pay for? Wow, very good. Wow, that's an excellent service. So a person, uh, if I'm a developer and I have, uh, and I am buying your service, uh, then I can uh, pick up the phone and, and call you, uh, Dylan, and say, hey, this is what I'm looking to do. Can you kind of guide me so that I can uh, gather the right data so that I can make the right decision? Uh, Absolutely. Is that the service you provide? Absolutely. And one of the great things about CoStar and what, what you get for the, the subscription is you get, a, you get your own sales rep, you get assigned your own researcher, uh, you get a product specialist, and then you get a team of uh, people like Paul, all at your disposal whenever you need. Training is unlimited. You have an entire team around you uh, that is essentially like an extension of your analyst team and an extension of a, of a group of consultants here to help you navigate the platform and make quick educated decisions that are gonna save you time and make you money. Very good. Yeah, now, so I can see how you guys add value to a developer and that's you know, phenomenal. Um, let's take it from another uh, perspective uh, because this data really can be used by all types of uh, service providers in the commercial real estate space. So let's suppose I'm a lender now, and, uh, and I want to, and I have a, uh, I've met with my uh, uh, loan committee and, and our upper management, and we, we have this pocket of money, uh, and we have identified that there's a great opportunity in student housing. We'll just stay with that. Um, and I'm looking for developers who are developing uh, student housing projects around uh, universities, let's say they're are in the South uh, and that meet a certain um, characteristic. How does, your, how does your service help a, a company like that? So we, we cater to uh, all sides of, uh, uh, of the lending institution with we, uh, the, the credit risk, the underwriting process, 
uh, as well as the origination teams, the guys that go out and find the deals. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, starting on the origination side, uh, we have all of the data going back 20 plus years on every property that's ever been built. Uh, we have we can compile a list of every owner of the top owners and the top developers for every market in the country, anywhere in the country, even out of market. Mm -hmm. um, so if I'm an originator, I can start pulling these lists and I can start again macro level in the analytics and, and start identifying, you know, where are the areas in the country that make the most sense to look. Uh, and then from there, I can go and I can pull a list of, of the top 100 developers and the top 100 owners of, uh, in the country or student housing or any, any way you want to pull a list. And now I have their email addresses, their cell phone numbers, their contact data. Uh, furthermore, I can pull the entire construction report. So we track construction from the air. We fly over it. We identify dirt moving. We send a vehicle out there to physically verify it. Uh, and then we enter that data and we assign a researcher to track it. So we are, we have, our construction pipeline is very accurate. It's real construction, but plus we track uh, proposed data. So uh, the originator can go in and see every project that's currently going on. He can see every project that hasn't broken drown, br ground that is uh, potentially in planning phase, uh, as well as every existing building. Who are the active developers and owners in that market? And also in sales comps going through and, uh, and looking at how many of these deals have been sold. And in sales comp, now we we're tracking, uh, we have the lending data. So uh, this, this lender can also see what other banks have been active in those specific markets. So it is a tool from an origination standpoint. If you're a lender and you want to find new business, uh, this is the only platform that offers that. And then let's say the, the originator finds a deal, brings it to the bank. Now the credit risk team and the underwriters, the appraisers have all of the backend data. And even we, we <clears throat> offer a, a, a packaged underwriting report. They can pull everything they need to price their risk correctly and to make an educated decision. Well, wow, very good. And, and also within our comps, um, you know, Dylan, he did a great job describing the sales comps. But if you're looking at those lease comps or where the activity is within a market, if you're looking at a specific property, since we do own apartments.com, we have the ability to take a comp set and look a little bit differently. You can take, you can see not only where, you know, the, the typical based on the, the building size or the un, number of units, average rent, you know, that's all kind of standard business practice. We've all done that before, but we have the ability to not only identi to identify where, if let's say you're searching for a specific, searching for a building, um, you and where you're also looking on the internet from a rent where renters are looking. Mm -hmm. So you could see really who the peer buildings are within that, in that geography, not just based on the where they are, but also where people are searching as well. Oh, very good. So you're, you're serving the developer with your platform, you're serving the lender with your platform or those in the lender community, uh, which goes all the way from the originator uh, all the way down to the uh, underwriter of that deal to help them to drive decisions. What other groups in the commercial real estate space would you say that your product serves? So I'd say um, I, I want to like 95% of the brokerage community almost uh, has CoStar, uses CoStar in, in some capacity. Uh, so we have, every, we have all the listings. Uh, the, the brokerage community is very valuable to us. Uh, they are, you know, we, we like to think of ourselves as the partner to the brokerage community. Um, you know, we, they supply us with, with data and in return, uh, you know, we supply a wealth of information and data to them. So um, we have all the listings. So every, all the brokerage listings for sale, for lease. Uh, so if you're a, if you're a broker or, sale, or commercial sales agent, you're using CoStar uh, in the platform to find potential listings. You're, look, you're using it to price your listings correctly based on census level, broad market data. 
Uh, you're looking at historical trends. You're also looking at it as a way to find new business. So if you have a listing, uh, you can pull a radius, uh, however you'd like to sort it. Of, you can find every other building like your listing and reach out to every owner and say, hey, you know what? I, I work with these types of clients in this specific area. So the brokerage side, it's a, it's a, it's a very valuable tool uh, to do business. You also have uh, the appraisal side. So the appraisal districts uh, use CoStar significantly uh, for property tax. Uh, and it is pretty much the gold standard for all appraisals, uh, tax valuation uh, in, in that industry. So <clears throat> we also have uh, retail. We track more retail properties than anyone in the world. We track, uh, we are ICSC's uh, information partner. So uh, from a retail standpoint, we're tracking, um, you know, what, st what stores are where, what what tenants are here, uh, what stores um, have moved, what lease rates are going for. So there's a, a, the retailers uh, use you know, Chick-fil-A, Burger King, McDonald's, uh, Amazon, Facebook, Walmart, uh, all of the big and small retailers use us pretty significantly. Um, and we also have another group where kind of everything else falls into and that's vendors. Vendors are anyone who needs commercial real estate data for business development. So if you're a roofer and, or you're a restoration company and there's a storm uh, that hits, uh, you can pull all the owner information for every building in that storm path. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're, you need to find out who owns a parking lot for your, your concrete guy, or I even sold CoStar to a guy who uh, sold art to buildings mm -hmm. in a, a company that, uh, was a security guard company that needed to know property management contacts to, for security guards. So the vendor category is anyone who needs commercial real estate data and contacts. So uh, ultimately, and then again, we talked about the lenders, uh, the developers, multifamily management companies uh, use us significantly to monitor their properties, to understand, uh, monitor their competitors, understand what they should charge for rent. So. Uh, it is very all-encompassing for any type of industry that needs uh, any amount of commercial real estate data and land. We're entering wow. into a new world, and this is a nice segue into uh, the upcoming conference that we are hosting, the uh, COVID-19 Impact on Commercial Real Estate uh, Conference, uh, where you guys are participating in the conference. You're a sponsor uh, of the conference. Um, you, what, if you can give me some highlights of uh, information you want to share to these owners and investors and uh, folks that participate in the commercial real estate space, uh, what, what's the main thing you would want to get across to them at the conference in terms of this uh, post-COVID-19 um, real estate environment? Well, first off, um, you know, and I, and I, Thank you again for allowing uh, me to participate. This I'm really looking forward. We got a great lineup of uh, information we're going to share, but I would just say hang in there. I mean, looking at the data, you know, yes, leasing is down, uh, the deal velocity is down, but you know what? We were a Dallas Fort Worth, and I'll speak to Dallas Fort Worth uh, briefly, just in terms of their office market. We were one of the strongest our office markets in the country. We had. 21.4 million square feet of leasing activity um, as of early June. And we still, you know, that's only down from the, where we were 26 million square feet last year. So as much as these headwinds we're all experiencing, we are working through this uh, quite well in terms of our, uh, our uh, I'm sorry, that was our industrial stats. Yeah. Um, and also there's just a tremendous sense of pent up, pent up demand for our, uh, for retail. I believe retail is going to come back. Uh, leasing has slowed significantly as well, but looking at the data, we're not experiencing the number of bankruptcies we actually thought we would. And, and I anticipate the employment picture looking very, being quite strong in the second half of the year as well. Right. And I definitely want to get you back on uh, after our conference and, and talk about um, the state of the economy. Um, one of the things, uh, if, if you've seen some of my previous podcasts, I uh, 
did a, a brief commentary uh, talking about the differences between uh, the healthcare crisis that we are experiencing now and the economic crisis that we experienced uh, about a decade ago, uh, a little yeah. more than a decade ago. And, and there are some, some significant differences, and I think some of the data uh, that you just referred to highlight the, the differences. Uh, there, there's a difference when, you know, you have no liquidity in the market. There, there's, you exactly. know, as opposed to, you know, we have a healthcare crisis, uh, and it certainly has an impact on our economy, but one of the great things is we do have liquidity. Uh, and so, uh, and, and as long as people are having babies, then people are going to consume goods and services. They're going to need a place to live. Um, you know, so, so those things will probably figure themselves out. Yeah, and, and also uh, to your point, um, you know, just, you know, this was a healthcare crisis that led to an economic crisis. And Dallas-Fort Worth, particularly a lot of the Southern markets are holding up quite well. Right. Um, I think a lot of that, the Fed has really just pulled out all the stops in Congress in terms of the unemployed, standing unemployment benefits. And uh, we're looking at the rent data and landlords are kind of still happy. I mean, uh, you know, renters are still making their payments. And um, so that's a bright spot. We are seeing that, uh, that take place. And the word of the jour before this whole thing happened was dry powder. There's still a lot of dry powder on, this, on, the, on the sidelines, and I think it's still going to be deployed sometime this year. And also, we have to consider the foreign capital. Uh, prior to 20, the start of 2020, we were seeing more foreign capital enter non-traditional or non-gateway markets than ever. Places like the Dallas-Fort Worth, the Charlottes, the Phoenixes. And I think is, you know, Dallas-Fort Worth is definitely you know, the United States, while everyone's kind of suffering through this global pandemic, we are clearly the, the cleanest shirt and the dirty clothes hamper and uh, still a great place to park money. And real estate is still a great place to park money as well. So, you know, I think we're, we'll, we'll all get through this one. Perfect. Well, guys, it's definitely been my pleasure to have you guys uh, on our show. Um, it, it, I'd love giving information to our audience. Uh, I'm certain that there are people who are watching this podcast that have never heard of CoStar, um, yeah, as big as you are. Uh, and there may be folks that who are current customers that may not be tapping into the full potential of the value that you offer. Uh, so, so hopefully this will be uh, uh, an aid to them as well. But I definitely would love to have you guys come back and talk sure. about uh, certain, um, you know, uh, macro and uh, microeconomic economic. Uh, data that, that we should be giving attention to as we transition into this new world of commercial real estate um, and just to see what the true impact is going to be. And we're also definitely looking forward to uh, hearing you guys present at the conference. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Charles. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. And you guys have a great day. You too. Take care. Thanks. How will COVID-19 impact the way commercial real estate is financed? Join us as we bring active lenders together to discuss their debt and equity programs. Register for this must-attend event.